Hello everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful day today, and if not, uh, there's always tonight. Or the next morning, if it's nighttime. Or next week, if that's really not the vibe, you know? There's always the future ahead of you. You just gotta wait a little bit. Today I thought it would be nice to sit down and find a little sketchbook. It's one of my more favorite hobbies to do, though I don't do it very much. <laughs> This isn't really meant to be a tutorial video, either. I just kind of felt like binding a book and thought it'd be fun to record the process. Though I feel like that's what a lot of these videos tend to be. It's just kind of the person binding, vibing, having a grand time, or struggling greatly like I tend to in this video. Like here I'm trying to keep the book, or the, the soon-to-be book, in frame while measuring out where I'm going to stab the pages. That was a fun experience. <laughs> I almost knocked it over several times. It's me! There I am. I would have worn my mask for this part, but I wouldn't be able to see where I'm stabbing, and that's kind of crucial when you're working so close to your hands with needles, I feel. And this struggle went on for a decent chunk of time. I'm glad that there is a time-lapse feature in videos, otherwise I think we'd be here for quite some time. Also, I didn't intend on having my face in frame at any point- Oh, I didn't dance. I didn't intend on having my face in frame at any point, but then I did. So I had to censor it out. There's a little smiley face for you guys, because I think I think everyone needs a smiley face every once in a while, you know? I think I think it's good to have. I really am stabbing the pages and struggling. When I switched to a smaller needle, it became a lot more of a struggle. But I, I got through it. You know. The bad things only last for a little while, and sure, they hurt your hands a lot, but hey, that's life. I don't know if any of you noticed in the background, but there's a spider, a stuffed spider, chillin' behind me. That is, I believe... I've forgotten his name! No! Man, I really forgot my spider's name. He was my friend. Oh well. We decide in the comments below what you want the spider's name to be. It can it can be the comments spider. Ooh, we switch in perspectives. All right, all right. I have something to say about this part. I decided to wax my thread for the first time for this, and I feel like that's where I made my first mistake. Because the thread was being the most obnoxious thing. I have never had such a big struggle sewing together the pages before. But the texture of the thread combined with the complete slipperiness that the wax gives it made it into like a 20 minute struggle that normally takes me five minutes to do, especially with only 30 pages like this book has. But it worked out, and I had enough thread for it, so it's okay. And I've learned my lesson not to wax, not to wax my thread. Also, I don't know if I'm supposed to use Elmer's glue. I do, and I've had zero problems with it. If you are an aspiring bookbinder, but you don't have the money or the time to go out and buy PVA glue, you don't need it. It's a scam. You can just use Elmer's. I decided to be fancy with this book and make the edges all smooth and nice to the touch like an actual like proper book. So here I am sanding down the book I thought I had initially recorded it in time-lapse, but I didn't. So I have this nine-minute recording of me in my little moth mask, real-time sanding down 
this block of paper. This mask also makes me kind of blind. I can't see colors properly because of the red lenses. So there were several times where I wasn't sure whether or not I was using the nail file correctly. But it's okay. <laughs> I made the corners a little bit rounded. And I feel like my arms are a little bit stronger now that I have sanded it down. Also, I got so aggressive that that pink thing that I'm holding got really, really hot where I was sanding it. And I think that's funny. I really do. It was really warm. Now we're cutting up the, the chipboard or the cardboard. I don't really know what the difference is. I think cardboard is used more in boxes. And then this is just kind of fancy cardboard. I don't... I don't know. I feel like either one works for books. This one's just a little bit fancier. Makes it flatter. But to be honest, I feel like cardboard box residue is easier to slice because it's got those grooves in it. Meanwhile, chipboard just kind of vibes. You have to have the hand strength for it. But it's really nice. It's really durable this way. Here we go measuring. In hindsight, it wasn't a really great idea to use a pencil on black paper. But like, I feel like it turned out decent, all things considered. I could still see my lines, and that's the important part. You don't need to follow the directions people tell you to sometimes. To be completely honest with you, the world is your oyster, and the possibilities are completely endless. Y'all ever hear about the butterfly effect? One small decision affects, like, the entire rest of your life, or the people around you, or whatever. I feel like there's a chance that, that that could happen. We don't know for sure. It's all just words. As all things tend to be. Some words are a little bit important, I would say. But at the end of the day, words are just sounds. You know? Like, there are sounds that are important to people, and we have to respect the sounds that are important to people. And not use sounds that we're not supposed to use. It's really interesting thinking about language in that way, because we've all got structures to each language, and different words that we use, and different words that we don't use. Language is wild, man. I don't know. Anyway. I'm gonna be doing like a little real-time thing shortly. I don't remember when. I am recording this this voiceover and watching the video and just being like, wow, I ended up not even needing to use it. Like this? Like the, the little quarter thing that I'm doing, making sure it looks all nice? Useless. Anyway.
I'm back. Hello. I'm sure you missed me. I realized something while I was watching this particular clip back, and that it was that I never introduced myself. So, hello. My name is Fee. It's lovely to meet you. I plan to post art-related content, cause a little bit of chaos with it. Who knows? Again, possibilities are endless, you know? Butterfly effect and all that. <laughs> the whole point of this channel is just kind of to have fun and to bring you all along with me. I don't really plan on doing tutorials, but like if you guys want some, I can do some. It's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be a wild ride. So if you want to see chaos caused through art, by all means, join me in my cause for chaos. Anyway, here I am painting the cover of the sketchbook. I decided to put a bee on it in like a little honeycomb pattern. I thought it would be cute and the person who I was planning on giving it to does enjoy bees. So I figured, hey, this would be really fun. Also, the paint I used was really watery, and I don't know why. I don't know much about paint. I just kind of use what I have. But it, it, it did take multiple layers, but it worked out. It's shiny, and it, it was gold. I don't know, man. It was exciting. I had a fun time. I think this part of the recording happened like hours after the rest of it because I ate and then I was like, I have to take a shower. So I took a shower and it was a grand time. Also, there was a sketch on the thing for this. I didn't freehand the whole thing. Just off the top of my head, straight lines and all. I wish I did, that'd be so cool. Just to print it out like a little printer. <laughs> magic, you know. We will be seeing the final product shortly. Got to paint the wings on. And... I think this turned out pretty well. And I hope you enjoyed listening to my ramble while watching the process. I know it was really fun to record on my end. I hope to see you in the future. Bye!